Okay, everybody, here is a brand new idea, hopefully for you guys, a little bit for me. Uh, but the idea is how are we going to make more story for our games? How are we going to build things that people will think, well, oh, that's kind of neat. I like that little bit that you put in there because it adds to the story of the game. So here I've got an acorn and just over here, we've got this big, huge, it's a dial button. It's very basic for now. That's just for learning. On top of that's a conditional button. We put the acorn in. It turns we get a gun. It's a little bit of animation. It's kind of neat. I think this is a good thing to learn. So let's get to it. Okay, we're inside a UEFN and this is our scene setup. Very basic as usual when it comes to learning. You want to do as basic as possible so that it uploads as fast as possible. When learning, learn on maps that are simple. Now we've got our dial button here. I call it a dial button and it's sitting on top of this what's going to be textured as stone. Then we've got a stone backing and another stone backing and then we finally got this dial that moves. Now these are all created inside of Blender so we're going to take a quick glance at the Blender setup because I think that's really important. Okay so inside of Blender we've got our base here and this is one object. You want to make this just one object because it doesn't move. It doesn't need to do anything and it's going to be separate from our other object. So let's go ahead and hide that. And then underneath that, we've got our our movable button. And I want you to pay attention to something that's very, very important that this object is in the X axis of what we're what we're going to have facing us inside of the game. And the middle of the dial is sitting right in the middle of the scene here so that when we import it inside of UAFN, we're going to be re rotating this on the X axis. So if I hit rot and X, we can see that we're going to be, we want to be rotating it on this axis here, right? Not on the Y, because that's going to be weird and definitely not on the Z, so on the X. Okay, so let's get back into UAFN. So we already covered how to bring in FBX files, export them from Blender in another tutorial. I'll link that below. So all I've done is create my models here. I've got my dial base and then I've got the dial here and I drag those onto the stage. And then what we want to do is we want to place the dial in the position that we want it in. The conditional button, we also covered that in another tutorial. It's very basic. We just set it up to have an acorn, let's go to the conditional button. And it just is going to accept a, an acorn and then it disables, it consumes it and then and then disable after use checked on. So the conditional button's done. We brought in our thing. We put a, the uh, the dial in the right spot. Okay, so we have our item grantor here as well. And a quick tip, you really want to keep your outline cleaned up. So I've got my base folder here and then this whole dial and base thing, if I select this and then move it, you see how everything moves with it? So that's really important. We want this to, to all have these items underneath it. And you can do that by just dragging stuff in. No big deal. Whoops, look what I've done. All right. Okay, so the item grantor is very, very simple. It's going to have one item in it, which is the MK assault. And we're going to keep everything that the player has, grant some extra ammo, and we'll turn off grant on a cycle because we don't want to grant on any cycles or anything like that. Last thing that we want to change is drop items at player location, say, put that as always. And then it'll, what it'll do is it'll take the item and just drop it at the player's feet. That activates this button. Next thing that we need to put onto the stage is a cinematic sequence device. You can see here, we just drag this thing in from the content browser and then devices inside of Fortnite, drag that in and that's how we get one of those. And we'll select that. And we don't have the sequence created yet. We're going to create a sequence, but you're going to set that up inside of here. But this is the very basics of what we need for our button to work. Now we need to get to animating it. All right, so to animate this thing, we're going to make a sequence. Now to do that, I highly suggest that you make a folder inside of your base project. And I call mine sequence or sequences or whatever. And this is my sequence here. So to make this, I'm just going to close this up, go back to content browser, right click, go to cinematics and choose level sequence. And we'll call this new animation. And we'll double click into that. And that's going to, if you've ever used After Effects or Premiere or something like that, this is just going to make sense. That's how you create a sequence. So let's go back to the original sequence. So this is my sequence that I use to animate the button. And we can see here, if we quickly kind of wander over here, we can see that as we play this, it moves the button. I've also got a sound in here. I had a sound. I made a sound from a sound pack that I have. It essentially just. It's 
Sounds like it's moving. Sounds like there's some little gears in there or something like that moving around. And that also adds to the story. I think it's really important. Okay, so to make this animation, let's go back to our content browser, go to our new animation, and we're going to add track, actor to sequence, and we're going to grab our dial that we made. And you can see in here, there's a transform and then rotation. And if we mess around with the roll, you see how it rolls around. And that's what we want. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is hit this little tiny button here that says add a keyframe. So we'll add that keyframe there, drag the playhead to wherever you want it. We'll go to three seconds and then we'll change this to zero. And then watch this. It just automatically interpolates the animation through. So that's pretty simple. And then adding in an audio track, we just uh, add track, audio track, and then we'll hit this plus sign and we'll go find our button, uh, our button sound, click that, and that will add that in. We'll just drag this back here. And yeah, and that's it. And it makes that noise and it goes there. We could actually make this probably a little bit longer. So we'll just drag this one back, this keyframe over to there, and that will make the animation a little bit longer, which matches up with our sound quite nicely. And that's the whole animation done. When you've done that, hit save, come back to the content browser, and this new animation is now complete. Okay, so let's tie it all together with a little bit of verse coding, because every game should have some verse coding in it, so that's what we're doing. Okay, if you haven't made a game manager before, I have a tutorial about that in the link below, but essentially I've got a game manager.verse file. It is just the basic file that's going to run when the game starts. Let's double click this, open it up. All right, so this is actually super simple. If you've never done verse before, maybe it doesn't seem that way, but it really is. So what we're going to have is three editables. Editables are things that we can access inside a verse from the game. So uh, one editable is going to be the conditional button, and we just instantiate it like this. The other one is the cinematic sequence device. I've called that the dial rotator. And then we have our weapon grantor, which is going to give us our weapon when we open up this lock. Okay, in the on begin, which runs when you uh, when the game starts, uh, we're going to hook up the conditional buttons activated event to our code by using subscribe and call on button activated, which is right here. On button activated gets an agent, which is the player that activated the conditional button. We're going to tell the dial rotator to start playing, passing in the agent. We might use it later, we might not. And then we're going to spawn grant weapon. If you don't know what spawn does, I've got a tutorial on that as well, where we make something sleep. But essentially, we're going to run something with uh, an asynchronous thread. So that calls grant weapon. Inside of grant weapon, we want to suspend this. We want to tell the game that this is suspending function means that it will put a pause somewhere or it will do something else. So in this case, we're sleeping. And so we, we because we spawn this thread here off of the main thread, we tell this side thread, hey, sleep for four seconds. Once that's done, tell the weapon grantor to grant the item, because that's essentially the amount of time inside of our cinematic that our cinematic runs. And then after that, we're going to sleep for one and a half seconds, and we're going to pause the dial rotator, because for some reason I cannot sort out how to get it to not go back to this default state otherwise. So I think that the best thing to do is that inside of our sequencer, when we know that the sound has finished, so we might make our sequence, you know, a little bit longer kind of the idea, so that when it gets to here, the sound is done and the dial is still sitting in the right position. So we'll just pause it there. And uh, that should be effective to make it stay because the conditional button actually, if we take a look here, we're not able to use it after its first use because I've disabled after first use. So it gets used one time. This lock opens one time. That's just how the story goes. You get a weapon, off you go. Nobody else gets to bring an acorn and get a weapon out of it. And that's it. All you have to do now is drag your game manager device, which once you build, so if we go, once you build your code, so if you save and then hit Control Shift B, uh, this will build, or you can go up to verse and build verse code. This will build the file out and it will show up inside of your folder here as a creative device. We'll take that, we'll just drag it onto the stage like that. But I've already got one of those. It's sitting right here. Over in the details panel, we want to hook up the conditional button, the dial rotator, and the weapon grantor devices to this custom verse device. Once you're done that, go ahead, play it. You're done. That was pretty cool, I think. So if you have any questions, let me know anytime, and I'll see you guys in the next one.